This video is made to show you how to use a PTVN chart to make predictions about the measurable quantities of gases based on the laws that we have discovered in chemistry. This particular problem says a sample of gas occupies 150 milliliters at 25 degrees C and it asks what is its volume when the temperature is increased to 50 degrees C. It notes in parentheses here that P and N are constant. P is pressure and N is uh, short for number of particles. Before you start any problem, you should probably just take a little time to try and make a prediction about generally what you think the answer is going to be. And since the temperature is increasing, based on what we know about gases, hopefully your prediction would be that the volume when we're done with this problem should be bigger than 150 milliliters. You start the problem out by just making your chart. And the chart across the top says P, T, V, and N for pressure, temperature, volume, and number of particles. The left-hand column has initial, final, and effect. Initial is just a word for start, and final is, well, final or end. And the effect, well, we'll see later on how we get these numbers, but basically it means what do you have to multiply the initial by to get the final? We'll start out here by putting in the information that we know. Uh, the easy part is pressure and number of particles don't change. So initial and final are the same, and there's really no effect. So I'm just going to put dashes in those columns to remind myself that I'm sort of ignoring them because they have no effect on the volume. Next thing I want to do is put in data that I have from the problem. And one thing that I know is that the volume is 150 milliliters. Most of the time I don't put the unit in the body of the chart, but I will often put the unit in the heading above each column just to remind myself which unit I'm working with here as I do my problem. The next thing I want to put in here is my temperature, and I might be tempted to just write 25 in the T box under initial because that is the temperature. It's 25 degrees C. But remember that the laws that we built don't work with degrees Celsius. They have to be in an absolute temperature scale like Kelvin's. So what we'll do there is we'll make sure that we add 273 to the Celsius temperature to get our temperature in Kelvin's. So let's do that. If I take 273 and I add that, oops, I add that to my 25 degrees C that I started with, what I'll get is 298 Kelvins. So I'll put that in my initial temperature column. Now, the question is asking me, what is its volume? That's my target. I want to find out what go, is supposed to go there. And I know that how I'm going to get it is multiply my initial by the effect, because the effect is what do I multiply the initial by to get the final? Well, the other thing that I want to do now is I want to enter what is my final temperature. It says the temperature increases to 50 degrees C, so let's calculate that by taking 273, and we're going to add that to 50, which gives us 323. So our final temperature is 323. Now to find the effect, what we want to know is, what do I have to multiply 298 by in order to get 323? And if you think about it, what you're multiplying by is 323 divided by 298, because the 298s will cancel, and you'll just get 323. So that's the effect. Because temperature and volume, we found out, are directly proportional to each other, they respond the same exact way, the effect on temperature is the same as the effect on volume. So my effect for volume is also 323 divided by 298. So when I go to find out what is my new volume, what I'm doing is I'm just taking my 150 milliliters and I'm multiplying by this effect of 323 divided by 298. So let's do the calculation. If I take 150 and I'm going to multiply by 323, find out what that is, large number, and now I'm going to divide that by 298, 
and I find out that I get 162.58 something, and probably I should round this off to three significant figures. I think that seems reasonable. So I'll write down 163 in my chart. And now I have the answer. The effect on volume and the effect on temperature are the same effect because they're directly proportional. And that works for temperature and pressure, but it doesn't work for volume and pressure. If you know uh, your gas laws, if you remember this, they have an inverse effect on each other. So whatever the effect is on pressure, you have to take the reciprocal, and that's the effect on volume, and vice versa. Whatever the effect is on volume, if you need to know the effect on pressure, take its reciprocal, and that will be the effect on pressure.